Welcome to Click Connect. I'm your host, Craig Sullivan. And today, we've got a new guest for you and an industry leader. But before we bring him out, I would like to thank our production partners, our good friends at Radisson Hotel Group of the Americas and Chicago Titles National Commercial Services Group. If you're looking for a new brand or if you want to get your deals closed on time and limit that brain damage, call our friends at Chicago Title. So both groups, Radisson and Chicago Title, would love to hear from you. Let them know that producer Danny and I sent you. They'd be happy to help you out. And with that, we're, we're talking leadership today. We're talking about confetti culture, hotels, team building, being a GM, author, and we're going to find out some more about his new hotel. So with that, I would like to welcome the one, the only, James Ferguson to Click Connect. Hey, Craig. James, how are you? I'm good, man. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's a pleasure. We've been excited to get you on here. Full disclosure, James sent me a copy of his book. I read it. It is one of two on my top five for this year. Okay? Okay. So, great job on the book. Thanks so much. And just so the audience knows, if you want Glenn Hausman and I to do a monthly book club, comment below and also ping Glenn and go, hey, you should do a monthly book club with or a quarterly book club with Craig. So, we'll kind of go for I like there. that idea. So, James, please tell the audience a little bit about yourself and confetti culture. Sure. So, um, you know, been in the industry for about 14 years, worked my way up from the front desk to, uh, you know, beyond GM to a corporate role. Uh, so I have great experience through independent and limited uh, service, full service properties um, and really have, you know, as I say in the book, made a lot of mistakes. And so my goal as I uh, put the book together was to create a roadmap or a playbook that would help others kind of skip a couple steps right through my career, through your career. We've all had those challenges or those things that we've had success with. And my goal is to make the path behind me a little bit easier for others. Uh, and my hope is that it does. And, and it's really just about impact. So, um, you know, confetti culture is all about the, the positive uh, opportunity we have through recognition and reward. And confetti is a, a tool that I utilize to elevate the energy in a room and with my team. And uh, as you guys will see, um, you know, as you read the book, that's, that's, why I use it and and but there's so much more to it it's about consistency through culture and leadership and you know my hope is for the listeners uh you guys check it out now are you using confetti like that <laughs> yeah i got a whole bunch right here <laughs> I got a whole bunch right here yeah there you go i've got props on the show everybody knows that so there we go now i i loved your book there, there's a lot of things that that just I think are absolutely wonderful in it. And granted, it's got a focus on hospitality, but if you're in any service industry or even a professional firm, whether it's a lawyer or accountant or title insurance company or real estate brokerage, this is all applicable. Now, was that by design? Is that how you wrote the book to be more broad based or just really that was a happy accident i think i would i honestly have to say happy accident it's a great question actually you know i, I focused on what i knew which was this industry and um but i think yeah. you know leadership and culture really does transcend well beyond where we are today and uh, i think the principles i talk about are things that can be done by anyone uh, that leads a team and um you know and can find success in it and that's one of the things that i learned to your point by accident that uh that people that aren't in our industry that did pick up the book have found ways to be inspired to try new things or do new things that has positively impacted them. And I think that's so great when you start with a niche and realize it's much bigger than that uh, the growth opportunity. It's exciting. I agree with you on that. So uh, confetti culture playbook, how do you boost the team and their contribution and impact? Because you, you know, your book, you you've you've been in some pretty bad situations. You know, you had a completely dysfunctional hotel uh, a while ago that you were you know a, a general manager at, and you kind of walked into a nightmare scenario. So, how did you get them to buy in and turn that around? 
Well, you know, it's a great question. I actually just posted something on my LinkedIn to kind of contribute to that answer. And that is to let the people know what their contributions are and that they are in control of making the difference. So as an example, at the hotel I'm at now, uh, it's an element by Weston uh, here in, in Valley Forge. Um, you know, this property needed leadership. I came in and was supporting them, but I tell them every day, my arrival didn't change anything. What you do with your thoughts, attitude, and actions is what's gonna get us where we wanna go. And so Daily Huddle is a resource or a tool that I use every day to communicate, collaborate, um, create consistency and cohesiveness and celebrate every single day. And when you do that, as an example today, my post was about how our GSS scores have increased uh, since my arrival and how their efforts uh, and how that's improved, you know, intent to recommend and our elite appreciation and cleanliness and all these other things that are so important to the brand and us. Uh, but really, they control the, how we got in there. And we threw confetti and we're super excited that, that they've done that. Uh, and it's important to point that out and celebrate that process, but also learn and have those tough conversations as to where we can improve and support them through that process. Absolutely. I think that's great. And you've got and I'm sure this isn't the first time you've heard this. I, I call it your three E rule. You've got engage, enable, and empower. So now my opinion is that that's absolutely critical in any team, good or bad. And if it's a bad team, it's even more critical. How did you get them to start engaging on the on that three E philosophy? Was that the daily huddle? And do you do that more than once a day? Yeah. So, you know, I always go back to huddle and I, I, you know, what's interesting is a lot of hotels don't do it, whether it's the leadership doesn't believe it makes wow. change or not, but uh, it's so crucial. And, and again, I talk about with huddle, it's you communicate, you collaborate, you create cohesiveness, you team building, and you celebrate daily. Those four C's is how you get to those three E's um, to get them engaged, to get them enabled and empowered. You have to have conversations. You have to know where the gaps are. You have to trust that the people on the front lines know what they're talking about more than you who may be seeing things at a higher level and have that opportunity to connect with them every day, which once a day can work depending on the size of the property, select service, limited service. But uh, if it's a full service, twice a day is what I recommend. And that allows the AM and PM team to stay connected because what can happen is they can be divided uh, and that can cause its own internal problems. Uh, and you want to make sure that PM team feels supported because as we both know, Management is usually here during the day and not at night. So how can we engage and enable and empower the PM team to feel the same way, to feel like they're part of it, they're collaborating and they're communicating every day. And, and, and again, I, I go back to huddle because it's so crucial um, because you really get to set the tone for the team in the day. I agree with you on that as well. And, you know, you write about that, that, that night shift. It's, you know, they do feel like they're out on an island by themselves at a lot of different properties. And that's unfortunate because right. they are critical. Um, you know, you're in a full service or a select service hotel. That's when everybody's really in the property and they've got to have their A game all the time. Right. Um, you know, now granted, you know, the daytime crew, yeah, they're checking people in and out and hopefully more people are using whether it's the television or their phone to check out and, and shorten those lines. But, you know, it, I, if I'm coming in, you know, I've already flown in, I've checked in, I've gone out, done my stuff. Now I want to eat. I want to get some emails done. I'm going to take advantage of the lobby area right. and sit there and, and go through my business. And hotel lobby is one of my favorite places to be. I love watching people, whether it's the onsite team or the guests there. Yeah. I don't care if there's five people in the lobby or a hundred. It's a, it's five different stories. It's a hundred different stories. You throw the associates into it. And me as a guest, I always say hi to every team member that I come across throughout my journey in the hotel. I don't care if it's the maid, the, you know, one of the front desk associates, you know, the engineer, it's always, and I, and I check their reaction. Do they look at you and smile back and right. say hello? Or are they just looking at the ground? Right. Cause it says and, a lot about where they're at. Know, yeah. 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 And where the hotel's at mm -hmm. and they're probably not having a daily huddle with, with the team. So right. I think that's a great idea. I've always liked it. And I can't remember, but there was a hotel in Florida, in Miami, that I saw. Their daily huddle started off with booming rock and roll music. 
and everybody's standing mm-hmm. and they were in a huddle. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's how they, they started their meetings, got everybody energized and got them to to rock and roll. I think that's a great idea. So let me ask you something. I, I personally, and the hate mail is going to come in and that's fine. I don't have a high regard for HR departments. I think they're glorified bathroom monitors at best. It's a horrible position. You have to be a solo individual. You cannot have friends because at some point disciplinary actions are taken if needed. The raise wasn't enough, any number of things. So there's always a barrier between HR and everybody else. And they run around all day making sure that, you know, everybody's where they're supposed to be. And again, I don't have a very high opinion of them. How do you deal with HR and implementing some of this? Because that's got to be some brain damage to you and the explanation on how this is going to help the team. Am I right on that? Or are they on board when you you let them know what you're doing? Well, you know, I think, you know, to, to the way that an AGM is the right hand to a GM, the HR is as well. And I always say, too, that, you know, HR is, yes, it's a title but everyone should be an HR manager. And more so what I mean by that is an employee experience person, meaning that you should be implementing and involved in those things that that HR manager is typically responsible for so that they're not having to run around and that is properly led each within each department. So um, I think it's up to the GM to create the relationship between him or her with that HR person uh, so that you can be hand in hand and have the same vision and mission and purpose each day. I like that. And you know what? I think that really does bring more of a balance with HR if they can see what's going on and they're not in an office locked up somewhere. Uh, So maybe I'm wrong, but just my experience for publicly held corporate America was not very pleasant with HR. So uh, I think that also is to each each, uh, person, right? Everyone has a different leadership style and depending on the role or the culture within that organization could also hinder or help them be at their best. So uh, again, I I always say everything rises and falls on leadership. And as the GM, if, if anybody in your team is under delivering or or whatever, it's your job to help elevate them. And and that's what I enjoy most. Absolutely. Tell us a little bit about your new hotel. You just took over a position as a GM. I obviously, you know, you've, you've been a lecturer, You've, you've got a podcast. We'll get into that a little bit later. But tell us about the new hotel. Sure. So uh, very fortunate. Brand new property. It's an element by Weston. Um, it's here in King of Prussia, PA. And uh, just super grateful to be part of this organization. It's called Wars Out Hotel Groups. And, um, you know, again, brand new product that needs some leadership. And, and I walk in with the playbook um, and the workbook to get these things done. And I know what to do to get out of tough situations. And um, you know, you just take everything each day and you build off of it. And, uh, you know, this is, uh, this is a great opportunity for me to continually uh, expand my leadership style and experience. And uh, the, the team has really, you know, uh, been encouraging and supporting through the process. And so I'm, I'm excited to be here. Nice. That's great. Congratulations. How long have you been there Thank now? Uh, it's about two weeks. So very, yeah. uh, very soon we just started, but yeah, excited. Very fresh. So good. Mm -hmm. New hotel. That's even better. I come on. You know, you don't have the five year abuse and the deferred maintenance on the PIP or a few other things. So congratulations. That's wonderful. All right, my friend, we are going to do our lightning round. Two minutes. Producer Danny's going to put two minutes on the clock starting now. Labor. Hours. It's just some team work. Is that fair? Am I doing this right? <laughs> yep. Motivate every day. Confetti every day. Reward <laughs> recognition. Favorite airport. Philly. That's where I'm from. Tequila or whiskey? Beer. Nice. Okay. Favorite hotel or resort? Uh, the Element Valley Forge, where I'm at right now. Drive or fly? Fly. 
All right, you did that with a minute 14 left on the clock, so congratulations. <laughs> there we go. So without giving the secret sauce away, how do you get everybody to buy in initially? Just one good point. It's a great question. Uh, biggest thing is, it's just like anything in business is building relationships. Uh, so one thing that everyone has said since I've gotten here is that uh, they appreciate my approach and the way that I walked in. Uh, I've seen it done many ways. A lot of people come in, point and shoot, demand changes and all these things, and it, and it, it comes off the wrong way. So what I do every time I start a new, new job involved with hotels is I have one-on-ones. And through that process, we build a relationship. So there's about six questions from a personal level and six questions from a professional level. It allows me to get to know their favorite food, what they do as a hobby. Do they like sports? You know, what do they like to drink? Um, tell me about their family. And I share the same thing. So instead of being the scary bearded bald man that's walking around and changing everything, I'm the guy named James who cares about them and they know that. And then the next part is the six other questions about professional. I ask them, do they have the time, tools, and training to be successful? Uh, have you been recognized in the last seven days for a job well done? Uh, what are the things that I can do to help you be more effective today? And through that, it allows me to focus my energy so that I'm not spending the first 90 days learning the hotel and all the problems I have, but instead focusing my energy in the areas to improve. Now, the most important part of that is follow through. So if I take that information, I learn who they are, I show them I care, I get the information and the, the things that are needed to be fixed, and I follow through and follow up with them, letting them know it's done. I build trust, I build those relationships, and I build respect. And, you know, right now, too, you know, we're, we're short staffed. So is everybody. And, and I got a lot of sweat equity out of my first two weeks here because I'm cleaning rooms and covering shifts. And while it's not a normal thing five years ago for a GM to have to do that, that's what's the reality now. But that's what's building a relationship so that when we have the tough conversations, when we realign our standards uh, and set expectations, those things are received well and we move forward together to be better. I love that answer. Now, I. Yeah, late, you know, putting bodies, you know, into the hotel is tough. It, it, you, we haven't done a great job of recruiting as an industry as a whole for a very long time. And I know producer Danny's sick of me beating that drum, but I, I have to. Uh, you know, with cross-training right now being so critical, is that also part of what you're doing to show them that, hey, you know, you can go as far as you want, not only with this hotel, but in this industry, because I think our average GM stay at a hotel is about five months or AGM is about five months right now nationally. So, and that's always critical for the GM to have that right hand person there that, that, that can pick up the slack and help and, and follow your playbook. So, are are you using that as part of the reward, showing them that hey, you know, we I think you can excel here as well, and let's do some cross training. Is that is that going on a lot with you right now? So uh, to answer your question, yes, I think you know communicating with your team expectations, seeing who's willing to step up and step out of their comfort zone and support is definitely important. Yeah. One of the things I've been very encouraged by, and even from colleagues that I speak to, is that everyone is really uh, caring about the guest experience and wanting to figure it out together. Uh, and again, that says a lot about my team too. And so, yeah, a lot of people are doing a lot of things and, you know, I kind of hate that term of we're all doing everything because then yeah. we're doing nothing at the same time. Nothing. Yeah. Um, right. But, uh, right now it's also super encouraging to see that people care. Um, and, uh, you know, through that there's growth, right. I talk about in the book education and how continued education is so important. And this yeah. is a, a perfect time to allow people to grow and learn more. I, I couldn't agree more with you. It's it it is the perfect time, and again, you know, we've got examples across the country of people who started out as an hourly associate that have now reached the pinnacles of their careers. They're running management companies, ownership groups, various other things. You know, GMs at hotels, resorts. It, it's it's a great industry. It's a noble profession, and we need to get more people into it. My friend, we are out of time. How can people get a hold of you and order the, this book? Yeah, so the best way to do it is to go to theconfetticulturaplaybook.com. 
uh, through that, you can see great reviews, great resources. There's retail and merch, all kinds of stuff. You can reach out to me there. Uh, you can also follow me on Instagram at the Confetti Culture Playbook or definitely check me out on LinkedIn. I'm always sharing resource and value there as well. Perfect. Hopefully we can get you out to California next March for Click 6. Yeah, I hope I so. Think, That'd be a great uh, time. That would be a, a very good thing for for me, you, and uh, the audience. So we'll we'll follow up with you on that. Sounds great. James, it is a pleasure. Thank you very much. Um, Absolutely. Thank anytime you. Anytime you want to come back, you've got an open invitation, my friend. Thank you. Thank you, Craig. I appreciate you. Have a good day. Take care. Thank you, our audience, for joining us today. We're bringing you the leaders in the hotel industry. It's hotels, it's hospitality, it's real estate, it's so much more. It's a career. So, you know, I, I highly suggest that you pick up James's book. I, it is a great read. It is a wonderful book. It can help you. This is definitely in my top five. It's one of two right now that are in my top five for the year. So... I really suggest strongly that you get it. You don't have to be in hospitality to get a copy of this book. You can order it from James's website that he gave earlier, and we'll we'll put it in the show a little later as well. And you can also get it on Amazon, and I think your team will benefit from this. So with that, I want to thank James again. I also want to thank our production partners, Radisson Hotel Group of the Americas, and Chicago Title National Commercial Services Group, California. So you want a new brand? You need to get your deals closed on time? Give both these groups a call. Let them know that producer Danny and I sent you. They'd love to hear from you, and they'd love to help you. I guarantee it. So thank you, our audience. Thank you, our guests. We're going to bring you another thought leader in the next episode as well. So remember, be kind. Share your knowledge. Now go be amazing.